هذا القرآن يوحدنا لطريق الخير يوجبنا الله تعالى أنزله ورسول الله معلمنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم What is the meaning of the word Jibt? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Jibt and Taghut. Allah says uh, Jibt and Taghut is anything false and useless. Example, magic, uh, tone totke, taking out fall, take superstitions like a black cat has crossed the path or uh, an eclipse and so something will happen, etc. Or uh, horoscopes or, uh, uh, or a palmistry or tea leaves or tarot cards, all these things or the number 13 in some advanced countries of the world today also they don't even have a 13th floor in buildings. So Allah is saying all these superstitious things which take one away from Allah. This comes under the heading of Jibt and Taghut. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these people believe in Jibt and Taghut and they say about disbelievers that they are better guided to the right way than the believers. Allah says such people are cursed by Allah. And what is the meaning of the word cursed? Meaning Allah's mercy is taken away from such people. And what does it mean that Allah's mercy is taken away from them? It means that the chance to do good, the tawfiq to do good to please Allah is taken away from such people. Astaghfirullah. Those are the ones whom Allah has cursed. And the one whom Allah has cursed, then the, such a person can find no helper. Do they have a share in the kim kingdom? If they had any share, they would have not given other people equal to a speck on a date stone. Or do they envy other people? Because Allah has given them from his grace. If so, let them know that we did give the bo book and the wisdom to the descendants of Ibrahim salam, and bless them with a great kingdom. But some of them believed in it and some turned away. Sufficient is hell to burn those who turned away. The Israelites were once upon a time the chosen people. So Allah is speaking about that. Those who rejected our revelations will soon be thrown into the fire. No sooner will their skins be burnt out, then we shall replace their skins so that they may taste the real torment. Surely Allah is mighty and wise. Meaning when the burnt area swells up, Allah is going to throw away that dead skin and give another skin to the kafir in the hellfire. As for those who believe and do righteous deeds, we shall admit them to gardens beneath which rivers flow, wherein they will live forever. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah will replace the skins of the disbelievers so that they may go on tasting the real torment. Surely Allah is mighty and wise. But for the, those who believe and do righteous deeds, then Allah will grant them with Jannah. Therein they will have chaste spouses and we shall provide them with cool thick shades. Allah commands you to give back the trust to their rightful owners. Meaning give responsibilities to deserving people. Person who does not deserve a responsibility, do not give that job to him. So Allah says give back the trust to their rightful owners. And when you judge between people, judge with fairness. Surely excellent is the counsel which Allah gives you. Allah is he who hears and observes all. O believers, obey Allah and obey the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and those charged with authority among you. Ya yuhalladheena amanu, atiu Allah wa atiu rasoola wa ulil amri minkum fa in tanazatum fi shayin farudduhu ilallahi wa rasooli. إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ذلك خير وأحسن تأويلا. So Allah is asking us, O believers, obey Allah and obey the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and also your leaders. The leader wherever he is at home, the wife is supposed to obey the husband. Children are supposed to obey their parents. In a classroom, they are supposed to obey their teachers. In traffic, we are supposed to obey the traffic rules. When we are doing a job, we are supposed to obey the boss. So this is the meaning of obey the leader. But Allah says, obey Allah and his messenger and the leaders. However, 
if there is a dispute in anything, then refer it back to whom? Only to the Quran and Sunnah, only to Allah and the Messenger. Because if the leader is giving a command contrary to the Quran and Sunnah, then that leader cannot be obeyed. Have you not seen those who claim that they believe in what has been revealed to you and are the prophets before you, yet they desire that the judgment be made by Taghut? Though they were commanded to reject them and Satan's wish is to lead them far astray into deep error. Now Allah refers to the hypocrites. The hypocrites knew that if the decision was going to be made by Rasulullah it will not go in their favor. And so they said, no, we'll go to these other leaders, the Jewish leaders, etc., to for a decision. So Allah is saying, despite having the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa if they still choose to go to some other leader who is giving a command contrary to the Quran and Sunnah, then they are actually obeying the Satan's wish. When it is said to them, come to be judged by the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa in accordance with what Allah has revealed, you see that the hypocrites show their utmost hesitation in coming to you. But see how they behave? When they get into trouble as a consequence of their own doings, they come to you swearing by Allah, swearing by Allah that they desired nothing but to promote good and bring about reconciliation. So this shows that the hypocrite is a person who says something and in his heart is something different. This is the definite part of the definition of a hypocrite. Allah knows what really is in their hearts. Therefore, how should we deal with hypocrites? Allah says, فَعَارِدْ عَنْهُمْ وَعِذْهُمْ وَقُلْ لَهُمْ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ قَوْلًا بَلِيغًا Leave them alone, admonish them, and speak to them effective words which may go deep into their hearts. Meaning, even if you know that somebody is a hypocrite, somebody is not a well-wisher to you, what are we supposed to be doing? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, leave them alone, فَعَارِدْ عَنْهُمْ this does not mean break relations from them. It means ignore their misdeeds, overlook their misdeeds, behave as if you haven't seen it, behave as if you're not even aware of the wrong things that they are doing. Number two, wa is whom? How do we know that Allah does not want us to break relations from them? Because the second commandment is wa is whom? Meaning speak to the, admonish them, give them good advice and speak to them effective words which can penetrate to their hearts. Now, whenever we advise somebody, if we are taunting somebody, being angry with somebody, and we are trying to put down that person, that advice will never go to the person's heart. The only advice which penetrates to a person's heart is the advice of a well-wisher. If the other person knows you're a genuine well-wisher, and we have to check our own hearts, how are we giving advice? Are we genuine? Are we their well-wishers? Because adin un nasiha. Islam is a deen which is a deen based on well-wishing for everybody. We need to be well-wishers. Otherwise, Rasulullah had clearly stated that this is what this deen entails. And if we are well, true, genuine well-wishers of people and we admonish them lovingly, telling them something for their own good, then there is hope that this is going, these words are going to penetrate to their hearts. We did not send any messenger but to be obeyed by Allah's leave. If they would have come to you when they had wronged themselves to seek Allah's forgiveness, and if the messenger had also asked Allah's forgiveness for them, they would have found Allah forgiving and merciful. No, O Muhammad wasalam, by your Lord, they will never be true believers until they accept you as a judge in their disputes. Meaning whenever there's disagreement, what do we need to do? Refer back to the Quran and Sunnah to settle our dispute. And Allah says, no, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ No, by, by your Lord, they will never be true believers until they accept you as a judge in their disputes. Then they do not find any resentment in their hearts against your verdicts and accept them with complete submission. Such a person can be a moment. If we had commanded them to sacrifice their lives or to leave their homes, very few of them would have done it. Yet if they would have done what they were commanded to do, it would have been better for them. Not only would their faith have been strengthened, but we would have given them an extra great reward 
on our own and also guided them to the right way. So when the Quran and Sunnah expects us to do something, we should not stay behind. We should, no matter what our heart is telling us, no matter where our benefit lies, what does a Muslim need to do? Submit to Allah's commandment and submit to the commandment of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَن يُتِئِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحُسْنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا ذَٰلِكَ الْفَضْلُ ذَٰلِكَ الْفَضْلُ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَكَفَىٰ بِاللَّهِ عَلِيمًا Whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be in the company of those whom Allah has blessed the prophets, the truthful, the martyrs, and the righteous, what excellent companions they'll be. This is the real grace from Allah, and sufficient is Allah's infinite knowledge. So those who sacrifice their personal, uh, personal interests, their personal desires, their personal benefits, and they bow down to the commandments of Allah and those of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah is putting them in such righteous company, such amazing company. This is where they are going to be on Yawmul Qiyama. Ya yuhalladina amanu, khudu hidrakum fanfiru, thubatin awinfiru jamia. O believers, prepare yourselves for encounter. Then advance in detachments or all together as the occasion may require. There'll be someone among you who'll surely lag behind. So that if you face any calamity, he'll say, Allah has been gracious to me that I did not accompany them. But if you're blessed with grace from Allah, he'll say, as if there was no friendship between you and him, I wish I had been with them. I could have attained a mighty good fortune. Let it be known that only those people should fight in the cause of Allah who are willing to exchange the life of this world for the hereafter. And whoever fights for the cause of Allah, whether he dies or is victorious, will soon be granted a mighty reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about such people who are just friends of good weather. Meaning, when they see that the Muslim ummah is benefiting, they say, oh, we are one of you. And if they see that the Muslim ummah is going through some challenging period, then they keep away from them. Allah is saying no. Only those people are liked by Allah who can exchange the material benefits of this worldly life in exchange for the tremendous benefits of the hereafter. And what reason do you have not to fight in the cause of Allah, to rescue the helpless, oppressed old men, women, and children who are crying, our Lord, deliver us from this town whose people are oppressors. Send us a protector by your grace and send us a helper from your presence. Those who are believers fight in the cause of Allah. And those who are disbelievers fight in the cause of taghut. Taghut means any evil force which is giving a commandment contrary to the commandment of Allah. Meaning that he is obeying the Satan. So fight against the helpers of Satan. Surely Satan's crafty schemes are very weak. So these were the challenges being faced by the Makkans. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, have you not seen those who were told to restrain their hands from fighting? Establish prayer and pay zakat. Now when at length they are commanded to fight, lo, a group of them fear people as they should have feared Allah or even more than that. And they say, our Rabb, why have you ordered us to fight? Could you delay its implementation for a while? Tell them the enjoyment of this worldly life is short. Life of the hereafter is much better for those who fear Allah. And rest assured that you will not be wronged equal to the fiber of a dead stone. So this is what stops us from deen. Meaning the loss of the, we feel that we are going to lose out on our worldly benefits. Although when we come towards deen, it's amazing, it's incredible. Sometimes we find even more benefits coming our way. But the fear that Satan puts in the heart of people who are trying to come towards deen is, no, 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 you're going to lose out on worldly benefits. As for death, no matter where you may be, death is going to reach you. Even if you are in a fortified tower, when such people are blessed with some benefit, they say, this is from Allah. But if they suffer a loss, they say, this is because of you, meaning referring to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them, everything is from Allah. 
what is the matter with these people that do not that they do not understand a word whatever benefit comes to you o people it is by allah's grace and whatever loss you suffer it is the result of your own doings we have sent you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a messenger to mankind allah is your all sufficient witness allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says may yuti rasula faqad ata allah wa man tawalla fa ma arsalna ka alayhim hafiza anyone who obeys the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in fact obeys allah as for those who pay no heed they should know that we have not sent you as a taskmaster over them they will say we are at your service yet when they leave you some of them meet together secretly at night to plot against what you have said allah notes down all their plots therefore leave them alone and put your trust in allah allah is your all sufficient trusty so there are many people who in front of others say yes sir but when they go behind their backs they are plotting evil plots against such people so allah subhanahu wa taala says anyone who obeys the messenger in fact obeys allah in this juz we find repeatedly the commandment from allah to obey rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there are many people who say today oh i'm going to obey the commandments in the quran but the hadith who knows when they were written and what is allah saying repeatedly no Allah wants you to obey the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so how do we obey him he is not alive anymore we can only obey him through his authentic ahadees and his sunnah and by following his seerah doing ittiba of whatever action he did in his in his uh, lifetime so allah says anyone who obeys the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in fact obeys allah afala yatadabbaruna alquran ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا why don't they research the quran don't they realize that if it was from someone other than allah they would find many discrepancies in it whenever they hear news of peace or of danger they spread it quickly but if they would report it to the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to the responsible people among them it would come to the knowledge of those who could draw the right conclusions if it had not been for allah's grace and mercy all of you with the exception of a few would have followed the satan therefore o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam fight in the path of allah you are accountable for no one except for yourself urge the believers to fight it may be that allah will overthrow the might of the disbelievers for allah is the strongest in might and severe in punishment allah subhanahu wa taala is asking us to reflect on the quran afala yatadabbarun alquran why don't you reflect in the quran how do we reflect in the quran there are two ways one way is to read each ayat ayat by ayat and go on thinking about it in depth read the ahadees pertinent to that read why they were revealed when they were revealed in what connection and also apply to our own lives how can i apply this to my life today that is one way of doing tadabbur in the quran another way is what we are doing these days meaning we are reading briefly the translation and a little bit of explanation here and there of the entire quran what is the advantage of this that we get to read the whole summary of the quran the whole gist of the quran and we can relate one portion to another portion So Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says afala yatadabbaruna alquran whatever way you do go ahead you must reflect on the quran because that is the purpose of the quran when we read the quran then only it comes down to our hearts then only it forms a part of our conviction and iman and then only do we start acting on it and conveying it to others So Allah says why don't they reflect on the quran don't they realize that if if it was someone from other than Allah they would find many discrepancies in it had the quran been from some other source other than allah more than 1400 years have passed people would have been picking flaws in the quran but no matter how hard they try they cannot pick any flaws in the quran they cannot find anything which they can disprove in the quran 
And also Allah says whenever somebody hears a news of peace or danger, what should it be? Not to spread it to ordinary lay people and to spread, uh, um, uh, spread a condition where they lose their peace of mind, where they start getting worried. What should they do? They should take that news to the responsible people among them. Why? So that these people could then arrive at the right conclusions and they could take action. So this is what should be done by our media today. They should not take all kinds of news to all kinds of people. They are just making these uh, common ordinary people worried. They should take the proper news to the proper people, the responsible people. And Allah says, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa fight in the path of Allah. You are accountable for no one except your own self. So we all need to remember that we cannot pass judgment against anybody. We all need to look at our own selves. Where do we stand? What are we doing? Are we obeying the Quran and Sunnah? Anyone who intercedes for a good cause shall have a share in it. And anyone who intercedes for an evil cause also shall get a share in its burden. Allah has control over everything. When anyone greets you in a courteous manner, let your greetings be better than his or at least return the same. Allah keeps account of everything. Allah, there is no God besides him. He'll certainly gather you all together on the day of resurrection. There is no doubt in it. And who can be more truthful in his words than Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now speaking about interceding in these worldly terms. For instance, if a person is interceding for another person for a good cause, he is also going to be rewarded for it. When people uh, came and told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa about something good, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to tell them, why don't you intercede with, uh, for that person to me and you are also going to get a share of the good reward. But if a person is interceding for an evil thing, then a part of that burden of that sin will also be laid on him. So we really need to know what we are interceding for. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had said, Ad-dalalu ala al-khayri kafailihi. A person who guides another person towards goodness is as if he had done that goodness himself. And then Allah is telling us about the reward for salam. If somebody says, greets you in a kind way, in a courteous manner, let your greeting be better than his or at least return the same. If you look around us in our society today, what is the norm? If people greet another person, sometimes the other person doesn't even answer him back or he says, I've answered in my heart or he mumbles something. No, it is wajib to answer a salam. Even if a non-Muslim is greeting us, we should say wa alaikum because the Jews used to say assalamu alaikum to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, astaghfirullah, may death be upon you. And so he was commanded to respond to them by saying wa alaikum, meaning on you also. So if their intention is good, may Allah give you also good in return. But for a Muslim, if a Muslim is saying salam, then it is wajib to answer his salam with something better or at least with the same assalamu alaikum. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he's keeping an account of everything. Even such a small thing as salam, Allah has kept an account of it. What is the matter with you? Why are you divided into two groups concerning the hypocrites while Allah has cast them off on account of their misdeeds? Do you wish to guide those whom Allah has left astray? Whoever Allah lets to go astray, you cannot find a way for them to be guided. Their real wish is to see that you become a disbeliever as they themselves have disbelieved so that you may become equal to them so that their own evil may be hidden. Hypocrisy is actually a disease of the heart. And so these people, they want others also to become like them, like with, with infectious diseases. If one person catches a disease, he infects others. Similarly, uh, the same goes for a hypocrite. He wants others also to be like him. So Allah says their real wish is to see that you also become a disbeliever as they themselves have disbelieved so that you may become equal to them. So you should not take friends from their ranks unless they immigrate in the way of Allah. 
And if they do not, seize them and kill them wherever you find them. And do not take any of them as protectors or helpers. So Allah is saying, unless they give a proof that they are sincere, you should not make friends with them. Do not rely on them. And this friendship refers to sincere friendship of the heart. The exception to this rule, exception to this is for those who take refuge with your allies or come over to you because their hearts restrain them both from fighting against you and from fighting against their own people. If Allah had intended, he would have given them power over you and they might easily have fought against you. Therefore, if they withdraw from you and cease their hostility and offer you peace, in that case, Allah has not granted you permission to fight against them. If somebody is not fighting you, you are not allowed to fight them. You will find other hypocrites who wish to be saved from you as well as from their own people, but who would plunge into mischief whenever they get an opportunity. Therefore, if they do not keep distance from you, and neither offer you peace nor cease their hostilities against you. You may seize them and kill them wherever you find them. Against such people, we give you absolute authority. So you have been, Muslims have been allowed to fight those people who are fighting them. But if a person is not fighting them, then why should they fight such people? Let's take a short break now. <laughs> Allah Ta'ala